Greetings, champion. Would you like your life to change for the better? Then keep watching. I'm Pastor Glenn Curry, and I'm sharing principles of success that once you grasp them and apply them, they're going to give you a bigger and happier life for sure. When I was a kid, occasionally, once every few years, my parents would take me and my brother to Disneyland. The ride I really liked then, as a kid, you know, maybe 10 years old, 8 years old, was Autotopia. I think I'm saying the name right. But anyway, on this ride, the kid, I could sit in a little car and I could drive around a course and I felt like I was an adult driving like my dad did. The child had control of the gas pedal and the brake pedal, just like in a real car. He or she could steer the car to a point. Now I say to a point because although you were steering it back and forth, there was a rail going right down the center uh, where the wheels are, and when the wheel hit the rail, it would straighten you out and you'd keep going on the little course. Now, if you were steer, steer too radically, the rail would keep you from crashing into the curb, obviously, right on the other side. Now, you may have wanted to turn the, th the steering wheel hard, jump over the curb, drive, through the crowd down to Adventureland, but that rail assured Disney stockholders, I guess, that you're gonna stay on track without running anybody over, and you're gonna end up exactly where you started when the ride's over. Well, your mental and thought programming, I'm gonna call it, which determines our results in life, is much like Autotopia. It guarantees that if you stay on that predetermined track, like you always thought, that you're ab it's going to absolutely make sure that you're going to end up where you started, like Autotopia. You may feel like you can steer your life wherever you want to go. Maybe you feel that way. But in reality, you'll notice that you're going around in circles sometimes in life. And until you deal with the preconceived limiting ideas, I'm going to call them, and the thoughts of failure and change your beliefs, you're gonna, ha you're gonna go back to where you started from. I've been a pastor for like 50 years, 40 something years, and as I counsel, I, sometimes women come to church, they have sunshades on, and, and a, a, the, the hat kind of pulled down over their head or something like that. And so I say, hey, you ain't no movie star, let me take off those sunshades, let me look at you. She takes them off, she's got two black eyes. I tell her, you gotta leave that dude, man. What happened to you? Well, my boyfriend hit me, you know, blah, blah, blah. I see, I just pull up your sleeve. She's got bruises all over herself. And so I say, leave that jerk. So she leaves him. She's doing good with the Lord. And six months later, she comes in wearing sunshades again. She's returning to that same uh, hooking up with losers, I guess you could say, right? If the way you thought and the things you're doing was capable of producing what you desire, hey, <laughs> you'd already have what you desire. If you want something new, if you want something more, you gotta change the way you think. And I'm gonna tell you, you gotta think in line with the mighty word of God, that God is with you, God is for you, God is your defense, you can't go under for going over, he's gonna make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert for you. You gotta think that way. Well, pastor, that, that just sounds like ego, that just sounds like pride, no. That's the Word of God. You've got to put the Word of God against the small place you're in. Stop letting doubt hold you back. Doubt's biggest weapon is rationalizing why it can't be done for you or why somebody else can do it and have it, but you can't. Doubt rationalizes by presenting your mind with past experiences, past failures, uh, your current obstacles, proving to you that your dream is unattainable and, and is not for you. Even maybe though millions of other people have obtained what you desire, it's not for you. So you've got to change that. And ho I hope that you're not challenged with that. I was because my parents came out of the Great Depression. And as you can see, I'm old. So they came out of the Great Depression and they taught my brother and me how to be poor how to go to secondhand stores to get what you want, how to clip coupons to go to the grocery store. I was taught all that stuff. So when I came to Jesus, I, I knew that there was something more in God for me. 
I told my wife, I want to travel. We, as a kid, we never took a great vacation, never been on an airplane, never been on a boat, never been out of state except to Arizona. So as your mind searches for possibilities of how to obtain what you desire, doubt at the same time goes to work and tries to rationalize with, with sounds like, uh, well, let me just say this, rationalize. And it, to me, rations the lies. Did you hear that? Rations the lies. Rationalizes to your mind reasons showing you why you can't have it, what you desire. God said, if you delight yourself in the Lord, he would give you the desires of your heart. Uh, Psalm 37, 4. And so by belittling you and using fictitious obstacles and proofs that remind you of your past failures and uh, doubt, trying to make you doubt and persuade you that you should just remain as you are as a worker ant. No, you're a child of God. You're a son of God, an heir of God, a joint heir with Jesus Christ, a joint heir. Romans 8, 17. A joint heir means equal heir. Doesn't mean sub heir, partial heir, equal heir. You're a joint heir with Jesus Christ. Philippians 4.13 says, I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. If you can do all things through Christ that strengthens you, you can be a strong Christian. You can be a strong man, a strong woman. You can, you can be great at, at the things you should be great at. In 1 Corinthians 3.21, it says, Let no man glory in men, for all things are yours. Wow. God is open-handed towards you. And because so many Christians have a condemnation and guilt, they don't receive from God. Oh, God, I need $100, but can you give me 10, please? Stuff like that. No, that's not for you. You come boldly to the throne of grace to obtain the mercy and find the grace to help in your time of need in Jesus' name. Remember Psalm 37, 4? You delight yourself in the Lord. Play praise and worship music during the day. Get scripture cards to read and to feed your faith and starve your doubts, praise God. And as you delight yourself in the Lord, he's going to author desires within you for something greater. And then as you pursue that and pray about it and find the scriptures that promise you that you can have what God says you can have, then he's going to give you the desires of your heart. There's two things. He gives it to you in that he authors it. And then he gives it to you in that he fulfills it for you. Wow, I'm Pastor Glenn Curry. Keep watching, keep feeding your faith, keep starving your doubts. And listen, you can hear my daily podcast, of course, here on YouTube, not just the video part, but you can hear the podcast um, and on Spotify and on my free uh, faith-filled app, Pillars of Faith Christian. Please like and follow and subscribe below. And I used to say, have a great day. I'm going to tell you in Jesus' name, make a great day. You make it by the right attitude. You make a great day by thinking the right way. You make the, a great day by using the mighty word of God like Jesus did against the devil and the temptations at the beginning of the gospel. When something tells you you can't do, you can't have, you'll never be, God doesn't accept you, you're a perimeter person, you take the word of God and say, I'm the righteousness of God before Christ Jesus. I stand before God without a sense of guilt, without a sense of shame, without a sense of fear, without a sense of condemnation. I stand before him as a son of God, daughter of God, heir of God, joint heir, heir with Christ Jesus. Make a great day.